Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. Yay! That means weekend and rest. All right. Um, I got this article from Hummingbird 2000. I'm sorry. Hummingbird 027. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and I will make sure that I put the link in the description box because I do tend to forget these things. Okay, um, anyways, science research grants related to immortality announced. The Immortality Project at UC Riverside awards $2.4 million uh, to study near-death experiences, uh, beliefs in the afterlife, and ageless hydra. Um, basically, what this article is, and I'll let you guys uh, read everything yourselves, um, but, you know, there are freshwater um, hydras, and they don't age. They just don't age. That'd be kind of cool, but I think, you know, we need to age, because <laughs> when you get tired, you know, it'll be even better of experience when we are released from the body. That's just my opinion. Um, let's see, they, they basically want to, you know, uh, here's, here's the list of this stuff, okay? Uh, real life experience in, uh, phenomenology, phenomenological, <laughs> okay, psychological and neuroscientific perspectives, um, which is kind of cool that they're doing this, um, they're gonna have people from all over the world coming in and, you know, helping out on this, um, because a lot of people argue the fact that it's, it's the brain dying and it's all neurological and blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, I guess you can't outrule everything, but I'll explain why I don't believe that in a minute. Afterlife beliefs, okay, um, this is, this is interesting because they're going to, uh, basically get... People that you know are basically scholars and whatnot, and and I guess that the 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 Chinese uh, culture is is a big part of this, which um, I find kind of interesting in myself. Um, yeah, I, I have. I think this is going to be really neat. I really hope that they publish their findings. I really do. Uh, immortality and mortality, and it basically is how we perceive. Okay, um, a life and afterlife and death and carrying on. Okay, um, let's see, our mind and body, body uh, as a natural intuition that supports afterlife beliefs, which is kind of interesting because your mind and your body are obviously two very different things, um, even though we coincide each other, and I think that that is a good thing to be researching, because, um, I, I think your spirit is your, quote, mind, okay, um, your spirit, it may be able to process the thoughts while we're in the human body, but ultimately, your spirit is the one who makes decisions and, you know, reasoning and things like this, um, and, you know, I think that the brain, the physical brain, it just kind of helps us process it as far as while we're in the physical being. Okay. Uh, identifying uh, characteristic and genes of immortality in Hydra, which should be interesting. Um, you know, basically what makes the freshwater Hydra effectively immortal. A death and the self. This is interesting. The belief in the afterlife in Christian, Hindu, and Buddhist cultures. And, you know, even though I am a Christian, I always think it's good to know about different um, different belief systems. I mean, it, it, it kind of enriches your soul in, in a sense because, um, you know, I, I don't see these people as enemies like some people do. But I think it is good to know what is, what's out there. You know, um, before I came to Christianity, <laughs> I got this 
book and it was a book of all kinds of religions because I was on the search I couldn't deal with this emptiness and it was like a kind of a swirly feeling and I I just felt that my soul I knew what my soul was but I wanted to learn about everything if that makes any sense to you guys um, and um, next one is um, multi-centered center plot study of the mind brain conscious and near-death experiences during cardiac arrest which a lot of people that um, either have brain trauma or cardiac arrest are probably the biggest things um, that I have read in my research that um, are those are the people that have near-death experiences although there's other bazillion other reasons but <coughs> excuse me primarily hopefully I'm not gonna die while I'm doing this um, if it does you know what I'll come back and make a video <laughs> that would be so cool okay um religious and scientific paths to immortality clash of cultures yes I do believe that there is a definite clash of cultures um, <clears throat> some people do believe that there is an afterlife. I think that if you pretty much follow any type of belief system, I, I won't say a quote, well, yeah, it is a religion, but any, you know, of your belief systems or religion is, um, actually, they're quite the same if, if, if you really get into it. I've read books about people of all different belief systems, religions, whatever you want to call it, um, that have very similar experiences. And that I found very interesting and amusing. And I was like, wow, this is, I, you know, once I had my near-death experience, I, I really dove into it and got into the, the technical and the scientific and spiritual and physical and everything. And it is the most amazing thing that I've ever studied in my life. Like, if I could have done this in high school, I would have been a straight-A student. Uh, let's see. Molding immortality in a virtual reality. This should be interesting. The direct experience of mortality. The possible of post-death continued existence of the persona and independence between the personal and physical body might influence beliefs, attitudes, character, and the behavior of people. <clears throat> um, well, I can tell you this much. After my experience, my attitude, behavior, my belief system, everything has changed. Everything is definitely changed. I am not, I am the same person. I think I just needed a boost. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, and the whole episode itself was not bad, but it wasn't what I expected, okay, I knew my soul was transcending, I knew that, I felt it, I left, I felt, I felt myself leaving, it was just, wow, um, but on the other hand, it was a little bit more of a, it was very thought-provoking because it, it kind of showed me I had some things I need to work on. Now, I didn't have, uh, this is, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the, the, the life review. I didn't have that. Um, but I was just like, pretty much it was like, um, you know how a video will fade into one frame and then fade into another frame? That's kind of how it was for me. Um, it wasn't scary. But I think the thing that it was, was that bothers me the most, and I've talked about this so many times, is the fact that it was not in color. And everybody says, oh, it was so colorful, it was so vivid, it was so beautiful. And mine wasn't. And I felt like a ghost. Because I don't, I don't know why, I just felt like a ghost in the afterlife. Until I called upon God. It was like my test. It was my test. It was like... Um, are you going to acknowledge this yet? I mean, fully acknowledge this. And I just said, I just said, God, where are you? Because I felt this, I just felt really weird. And I looked up, and it was completely white. Completely white. 
maybe it was the light, but I heard angels singing. I heard singing. I heard music. I understood and everything. And boom, I came out of it. I came out of it for the most part. I was still fairly unconscious, but that's where the my experience ended. And it was almost like I felt blessed. And then after that was um, in and out of consciousness. And that's when I saw the two, I don't know, angels. I'm going to say angels. Um, healing me or fixing me. And them telling me to hang on. You know, <laughs> it's like, hang on, Dawn. They knew my name, which I was like, okay. I, they were like, hang on, Dawn. We're, we're fixing this. We're, we're fixing this. Don't worry about it. We're taking care of you. Well, I kind of assumed they were doctors because they were all in white. But I couldn't see their faces because there was a white light. It was so bright behind them that all I could do was basically make out like a figure. It, it was just wild. Just wild. And um, the aftershock of coming to and awakening fully in this reality pissed me off. I did not want to be in the world felt so cold. It felt like someone was against me because of one thing or another and it was like a curse that I came back but um, and through my, my, my studying this happens a lot I mean I was pissed you guys it was why the F am I still here okay <laughs> and you know God's probably up there going come on Don no, don't don't go there please you know but I was I was mad and um and I understood why later on. Um, I had some really wild dreams after this that kind of said, you know, hey, well, you're not done. You're not done. And you need to continue this journey through life. You have minds to change is how it felt like. I have to help people seek kindness even during my episodes, as I call them, where I'm just so... In you know, it's, it's kind of like a, I don't know, I get where I'm very negative about things and um, a lot of it has to do, it stems from post-traumatic stress syndrome and, um, but it's, it's, it's through that sometimes I think that people learn how to handle situations because when I'm having an episode, I come to you guys and I discuss why I'm working it out. Like, why am I hurting so bad inside? It feels like your soul is just in pain. But through prayer, through talking about it with you guys, it's not so bad anymore. It doesn't hurt so bad. And also, I am not afraid to um, tell the truth about things that I covered and buried and buried and buried and buried. Um... And I didn't care what happened to me. I was going to tell the truth. Because I just, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it anymore. And there's still some things that are buried deep inside. And you know what? Sometimes I think I'd just rather keep them quiet. Until I get to go home and discuss them with Jesus. And, um, you know, I'm sure. Because I don't feel that I have a bad soul. But I would like to know what in the heck was wrong with me. <laughs> because I still can't figure it out. I can't. they will probably say, well, honey, you just drank too much. Or you did some things that weren't so good for yourself. You know, and it just, I don't know. Angry about something that happened in the past. I don't know. Um, but when I go home the next time, I'm staying. I'm staying. I am going to just really throw a fit if I'm thrown back here again. But, you know, it's been known to happen. People have multiple near-death experiences, and they come back, and they're, they're changed. And I believe that that's why 
Um, I felt like I was in a cloud for like two years. I was just like, I'm going through the motions. Okay, God, you know what? I'm still alive. I'm going through the motions. Whatever. And then it just began to get clear to me. And it took a traumatic emotional experience to make it all clear. That everything is not what it seems. And I thank God daily for that awakening. Um, these are, I'm going to go back to here and then I'm going to get off. Uh, but these are the um, people that, actually, the media contacts. I think this is just amazing. I love seeing more and more research during this. And if you ever, ever want to read a book about um, spirituality and the soul and the spirit, please read Fingerprints of God, of God, the Fingerprint of God. It is amazing. It goes, it's a, it's a doctor and she um, goes into like a lot of things like people who have near-death experiences, people who are dying, people who have changed because of some type of spiritual experience um, within their life. And um, guys, you know, when we rip, when we're taken out of this lump of flesh, the, the possibility is absolutely endless. And um, you can make it a very good experience or you can make it a bad experience. It's all depending on your life experience. And that's kind of what I think it could be about. Um, and and now the ultimately being a decent person. And I think maybe sometimes that, like I said, my experience was a a lesson like um, that I was kind of in a mucky spot in my life. I didn't have a whole lot of confidence because I had people telling me that or making me feel like I wasn't what I should be. And I, um, after two years, shed myself with those people because I am worth something. If I'm worth something enough for God to let me come back and do this again, then I should be, I'm worth something. I'm worth something, whether people want to acknowledge it or not. Okay? I have self-worth, finally, after years and years of self-abuse, emotionally, I have it like this, you know, I have um, a, a bit of a calmness in my storm. So, being disabled is not easy, folks. It's not at all. Um, you have a lot of why, why, why. Um, I still think I chose it because <laughs> that's the kind of stubborn mule I am. But at the same time, I don't think I understood what exactly I was getting into. So, if there ever, ever is a time, I'll be like, you know what? <clears throat> Before I go back down there in that craziness, let me research some things, okay? Um, <laughs> please. No, uh, but seriously, I do think that that is the end of the road. And um, our, our life begins when we die. And this is basically school. So... Okay, kids, welcome to class. I'll see you soon. I love you. God bless you. And uh, be good to yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.